Hi and welcome back. Today we will set up MongoDB for our application. First of all, we need to install MongoDB. Please take a look at the links in the description and install MongoDB for your system. To ensure everything is working smoothly, open your favorite database inspector tool. MongoDB Compass is a great option that I will use. If you can connect to MongoDB server using this connection string, we are good to go. Time to update our code base to add settings and environment variables support. Let's start by installing a library needed for settings, Pydentic settings. Next, we'll create a pet project folder for our project configs, along with settings file inside. In this file, we define our app settings class. Inside the config, we specify that environment variables will be inside .n file and that they will have an app prefix. We will then set up two environment variables, MongoDB URL and DB name, and create an instance of settings. Now let's create .n file. Inside of it, we have two environment variables that we already specified, MongoDB URL and MongoDB name. DB URL is our connection string, the one we used in MongoDB Compass, and DB name is just the name of our database. I will go with DB pet project. Now let's bring our MongoDB client into the picture. We will start by installing Motor and a synchronous MongoDB driver. With the help of a lifespan, we will ensure our MongoDB client behaves well during application startup and shutdown. Let's define a lifespan. For this, we will use a sync context manager decorator. Now, the first part of it will be setting up MongoDB, then yield, and then closing MongoDB connection. Last thing, let's update FastAPI to add the lifespan. Now, let's create a DB folder and add utils.py file there. This file will have one function that will create a MongoDB client instance and then return a database. As you may notice, there is an issue with asyncio motor database type hint. To fix this, we need to install stops for motor library, called motor types. Now this problem is fixed. The final step here is to use the created get mongodb function in main.py. Let's import the function and use it in lifespan. Time to put our mongodb setup to the test. For this, let's create an API folder with models and views files. In use.py, we'll create a router and then add an endpoint to start the new game. It will take some player data and return a created game. These two models, start game and game, will be defined in the models file. To have something to begin with, we'll keep them simple. Start game will take a player username who created the game, and game will just have two player fields. In our endpoint, we first prepare the game data, and now two players will have the same username. Then we'll get games collection and run insert one function to add a new document to the MongoDB. In the final step, we'll use find one to get our result. We also define this helper function get current app that will allow us to get our fast API application. It is needed to avoid circular import issue. Let's register our router in main.py. Now it's time to test everything. Let's first run our server using UVCorn. Let's open MongoDB Compass and API documentation in the browser. You can see that everything is good, our created API endpoint slash games is there. Let's try it out. First we specify the player name that created the game and click execute. Now the game is created. Let's check it in MongoDB Compass. We click refresh, the new database will be created. It's the same name as we specified in .n file. If we go to it, we will see our game's collection name, the one we specified in views. And if we click it one more time, we will see the document we created. Awesome. Now if we run it again, click execute, and the second document is created. Let's fine-tune our setup a bit. First, in models.py, let's create a base MongoDB model. It will have a collection name and a class method to get this collection name. Next, we will update game to inherit this MongoDB model and we'll set up that our collection name is games. Next, as you could see in your database inspector tool, MongoDB generates an ID field for each document we created. But for now, we don't specify this ID field anywhere. Let's do this. First, we'll create a field.py file, and then paste this logic. 
The links will be in the description if you're interested to learn more about this, but in short, it relates to Mongo's object ID field and Pydantic with release. Ignoring a complex Pydantic scheme logic, it's just a class with a function to validate ID. To use this field, we first import it and then add it to our MongoDB model. Next, let's go to views.py. As you can see, our endpoint contains logic to manipulate the database, get and insert data. And it's clearly not a place to put it, because we want to reuse it. So let's create a separate database MongoDB client that will contain this logic. We'll add our imports, then our helper function get current app. After this, MongoDB client, which will be a singleton. It will have an insert function that gets a collection and insert a new document there. Also, a get collection function that uses collection name and returns a collection. And the final thing is get function. It gets a collection, find a document by ID, and returns the result. As you could previously see in MongoDB Compass, MongoDB generates an ID with underscore ID. But in our model, we defined it as ID and not underscore ID. So to fix this, we will apply this logic in the end. As we created our MongoDB client, let's update views.py. First, we import it, create an instance of MongoDB client, run insert function, get function to get our result, and we can remove the rest. Let's run the server to see our changes in action. If we create the new game, now the ID is returned. We can also check in MongoDB Compass, and everything's working fine. It's linter's time. Now, if we run make lint, our changes will be formatted, and we'll see some MyPy issues. Let's fix them. We need to update settings.py, views, and main.py. Oops. There was a mistake in lifespan logic. Right now, we are closing MongoDB database, but we should close the client. Let's fix this. First, we update the main.py to get MongoDB client. Then we'll go to utils and update our function to return the client instance instead of the database. Now, we may fix the lifespan. We first get the client, then get the database, and at the end we'll close our connection using the client instance. If you run the server, execute our endpoint once, and close the server using Ctrl C, we should see no issues now. Then if we run make lint, everything is green. Awesome. And that's, my friend, wraps up part two of our series. We've tackled MongoDB setup, configured settings and environment variables, crafted a lifespan, created a simple endpoint, set up a MongoDB client, and fine-tuned our models. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a great day. Bye.